Hello and welcome to my very first touch designer tutorial. You might hear that my English is not that great, but I'll do my best in hiding my Belgian accent just a little. Today I'll be building an audio histogram, which allows you to visualize the frequency content of a song over time. And as I'm not that good at multitasking or combining both building and the explaining at the same time, I came up with another technique that allows me to first intuitively build a nice project where I can just try out a lot of interesting things and once I've come up with something nice I'll just rebuild the chaotic end result in a more structured way and then undo it completely uh, in order to start recording and explaining everything step by step in a structured way uh, while redoing everything. So hopefully this allows me to make these tutorials a bit faster while allowing you to still follow along. So without any further ado, let's start building or rebuilding. So undo everything. This is what I've done, but undid. So we start off with our first stop. It's a line, it's laying on the X axis from zero to one but mostly we want to work towards the Z direction as it's more uh, used in for depth. So um, I will also activate this toggle, um, showing you only the parameters that I've changed from a default operator. If you edit, everything is a default, but by toggling this one, you'll only see uh, the things that I actually changed so I can more easily explain what I did. So for now it's a default, but as you can see, if I redo, you can also follow up here. Um, next parameter change is point B. So this is point B. It's lying on the laying on the X axis. So let's redo, uh, moving point B to the origin and next moving it down the Z axis to minus five. What else did I do? I increased the number of points giving it some more detail. So now the line is made up of 200 points. Um, this will give us um, some more detail to work with. So you can actually see the frequency uh, going up and down and being registered over time for each frequency. So next at a copy, what did I do here? Increased the number of copies to 50. But as you can see, if I open up the viewer, only see one that's because all 50 copies are laying on top of each other so next uh, give them some offsets down the x axis so they are nicely spread out next up um, convert to the chop domain as um, this is where we want to do uh, the replacing of the TY channel and the TY channel will hold all the frequency information that we will be obtaining soon. But for now, as you can see, there is no frequency information being yeah, registered or being used to give all these lines some movement. And just for demonstration purposes, I will continue adding an info chop, uh, making it point due to this chop so it can get its length. So only get its length and start instead of starring it and getting all its information. So we only get its length. Next up, we add a pattern chop and we, uh, let's see what happens. So if we make it point, its length we make it point to the length we see that this if we middle mouse button click we see that it has 10,000 samples if we go here do the same we see that it also has 10,000 so it follows along i will toggle this one on again so you can see what i changed um okay so next I gave it some more cycles to make it more interesting. It will become apparent in a moment. Decrease the amplitude, uh, give it some phase. Um, apps time.seconds is uh, actually the time that your touch designer project is open already. So as it's 
longer and longer open um, this value will increase and the face will increase as well so all this sign stuff is moving along anyway let's continue add a replace um, connect the first one connect the second one and next i'll probably move to channel uh, where i change a channel name to ty and by doing so the replace chop actually understands that i want to replace this green ty channel with the one i created down below and lo and behold or however you say it um you see that the flat ty channel has been updated by the newly created channel next up we reconvert back to the subdomain in order to visualize our end result and as you can see we have something going on not flat lines but actually some dummy frequency just for demonstration purposes just to show you what needs to be done and this is replacing the ty channel so that's basically the thought process or the the concept behind the frequency analyzer thing that i made um, we will keep these uh, operators the rest are just for demonstration purposes so let's next continue uh, with the actual audio file that we're going to visualize so add in an audio file in chop um, i'll give it my own song uh, which i'll try to leave in the description uh, if i know how to do so um so we want to listen to what we're doing so we add in um, an audio device uh, thing and make it point to cable input which i'm using for recording this anyway let's continue at a select chop just to select one of the channels we don't need to analyze uh, the frequency spectrum of both channels so for this one i will select channel only channel one probably so we only select channel one next up we add an audio spectrum and most of the time i give it some more high frequency boost because maybe the song i created was a bit bass heavy but uh, generally it gives a more um, or a better um, visualization of the high frequencies next up we do a resample because as you can see our middle mouse button click uh, we now have 22,000 22, samples which is not necessary so therefore um, let me go to the comment page i deactivate the time slice and this makes the method um, available again or active so i can change it to new rate new interval also the unit values change it to absolute uh, start and end don't use the seconds but i'll change it to samples so i can update the end to 199 uh, meaning that i obtain only 200 samples which is more than enough for now to represent the uh, audio spectrum so what's next um, a shuffle what this one will be doing uh, we'll update the method uh, to split each n samples actually and each three samples in this case so we're going to split this whole channel into equal chunks of three samples each uh, if we middle mouse click we see that this gives us like 67 channels of three samples each but we want some more control over this so therefore we will add in an info chop again make it point to the resample only get its length uh, so we now know how long it is 200 as we said it should have 200 samples go ahead by adding a constant and updating it to 50 um, and add in a math connect both 
and then combine both chops by dividing. This gives us a length of four, which we want to use for the N value. So if we export it, activate viewer, export it to the N value, you will see now that if I middle mouse click that indeed I only have 50 channels, which I can control now with this constant chop. 50 channels of four samples each. So that's the thing we want, a bit more control over everything. So let's continue again. Uh, next, we actually want to analyze the maximum. So now we are just looking at the average, but we go for the maximum um, of all of these channels, which is actually representing the frequency bins. So now we have you have to imagine that we now are having 50 frequency bins um, being registered or generated in this chop but we only want to obtain a maximum so that's what we do in the analyze chop next up is the trial or trail i don't know i'm sorry i i don't know how to pronounce it half of the time but anyway um we just uh, register it for a period of time you can afterwards still increase this window length to have a more um, to register a longer period of time of frequency content but anyway the default is fine for now um, this can stay at its default um, as you can see uh, afterwards we also add in a stretch uh, chop so we can just reverse it and you can see they're running the opposite way. This is so the frequency is running towards the minus Z direction or away from the viewer. Um, but you can also quickly change this afterwards to make the frequency content move to yourself. So next, what did I do? Um, stretch, uh, apparently I want the length again of this stretch um, chop. So we can export it both this length and this um, number of rows. This is actually, uh, so you can see that if I undo and redo and undo and redo, I'm exporting this chop towards the copy you can see that it's now also controlling the copy sop so if i update this constant um, it will give me more channels in this chop but it will equally or in the same time it will also give me more um, number of copies and more lines that's what we want same for the info for the this info note or operator uh, i'll export it to the line so that i control the number of points of this line so by referencing or exporting these two uh, chops we can easily control the number of lines in parallel or the length of lines or how detailed they are um let's continue again we do a shuffle and this time we go for the sequence all channels method meaning that all these uh, 50 channels are now being placed um, one behind another so we get one long channel uh, which we can then rename and let's see what i did next so okay we renamed this to ty sounds familiar uh, why because i also in the meantime added a replace so that i can use this created channel with all our frequency data and i can replace the ty the flat ty as i said i was going to reuse it uh, i'll reuse this um chop i connect it and because i already renamed it to ty and if i connect it the flat one will be replaced by an actual channel that represents or holds the frequency data so next if we add a chop 2 
we can see that it's not like the dummy frequency movement but it's actually representing our song with some artifacts uh, which we are going to fix later on but anyway let's continue the default um, geometry and rendering uh, sequence so add a null so we can add in a geometry uh, next is a camera viewport which is a nice addition i think it's only available in the newest version of touch designer which is 2022 20, and something but you'll find it under tools and camera viewport if you drag this in you'll uh, have a controllable an easy controllable camera um, which you'll see soon um, so next up um, I create a render top that's the render top um, now it holds the cam 1 which is default but I didn't add a regular camera I added a camera viewport so you'll see me add the camera viewport and now something appears uh, it's still quite dark but later I'll also add a line material to give it a white um, color um, next up probably I updated the camera viewport because now for the render top it's pointing to a render that's inside of it but we don't need the render top inside of it we can just use this one so this one gets updated to render one and now they're pointing towards each, each other and we can see that indeed the see did i already create it no now i continue apparently by adding a line material um, if you go to the geometry you need to edit under this uh, field or this parameter so that's exactly what i did and now you can see it changed to a white color and if i also activate the viewer for the camera camera viewport uh, let's drink a little bit Okay, so now we have control over the audio analysis and you can give it some spin and you can make it spin forever if that's what you like. But that's basically the end result with some undesired artifacts uh, which are actually, let's try to visualize why this is. So each time um, this line yeah, each line, each, sorry, each time this line is going back to the front, it's it's still connected because we use a line material. So the Z um, info, or the Z data of these lines is represented here. So each time we go back, we actually, yeah, you can, can compare it with a CRT, an old television each time a line is drawn it goes back to the beginning and it deactivates so the the going back of the drawing is not um, registered on the screen this is basically the same so we need to make take care of um, this going back and disable the the drawing of the line each time um, you move from far to near on the z-axis so therefore let's see what i've done to uh, remove this artifact we go back to the shuffle one we get its length um, we add a pattern chop let's see what i did here um, bum, bum. we change the type to constant uh, we make its length probably the same length as the one above um, we create three channels, which you can find in the second tab. So we create three channels RGB to make it wide, because by default the amplitude is one. So RGB at one is wide. So that's enough for this one. Let's undo. So um, RGB is what we need. Next, we will also need an alpha channel. So copy this one it also or it already has 
the p -p -p correct length because it's also pointing to the length but we don't need rgb we just need um pum -pum. yeah we need a square that's yeah spoiler um so we give it a channel name of a but we also gave it a type of square and i if you just give it these parameters i will show you in, in a bit but then you'll get something like this but let's continue just to show you what i want to do with with it with this sorry um, if i then create a merge i can use this one and i can add the newly created channels to it so let's add the rgb and the alpha so if i now view this one and right click again and number of graphs all in a single one i can make it a big bit a, a bit bigger Blah, sorry so if i zoom in you can see now that each time when i go from back to front back to front the alpha which is this uh, square ch channel or signal the alpha is put to zero so the the drawing when going from back to front is actually um disabled so that's the whole idea behind fixing this um issue it's not an issue it's just as as it's designed but we still need to fix it um again let's create another another chop two we don't want to use only the txtytz channel but we also added some additional channels so let's add them rgb um, and we need to map them to cd012 and also if i make it a bit better big a bit bigger um, also add cd3 for the alpha channel there you go so now this one has some more information um, contained within it um, except the xyz components but also now it holds rgb alpha so now we can replace the original one that doesn't have it with the one that has it so let's replace it undo the old one redo and the new one is being rendered but still we see that we have the artifacts that's because we need to use a parameter of the line material so if we go to the common tab and we activate discard pixels based on alpha we are actually discarding the the lines that are connecting back to front uh, because they are having an alpha of zero so if i activate this one you will see that magically all the lines have disappeared which is what we want and then you have the end result again which you can spin and do whatever you want with you can give it another color in the line color tab you can give it a single constant color or if you go farther back you can give it a more black one so it fades in you can start playing with the rows the length um, you can as well use the stretch so if i now for example reverse you see that the music yeah the frequency for the music um, is reversing it's going away or it's coming towards you so that brings us to the end of this tutorial and as homework if you want you can still of course map some parameters to the parent component so you can start modifying the offset for example between the lines individually so it becomes a bit more dense or a bit more spacious but that's still some homework for you so hopefully you enjoyed my first tutorial and hopefully see you in the next one.